Okay, now we're back to thinking about how to compute this best fit line to the data that we're thinking about. Remember, we have pairings of data, X and Y. We have a bunch of it. We'd like to fit a line or a parabola or any other kind of structure through it. We're going to start off with something simple. We're going to do a line fit. We're going to figure out how would I compute the coefficients of this line fit. Okay? So our objective then is to think about this function here, which is just a line. And the real question that comes up is if you give me a set of data, right, my data itself are pairings of x of k, y of k. Okay, so I have a pairing of points, and I want to try to fit this through it. This doesn't necessarily go through any of the points, so I have this error. And so the objective is, is to figure out what are A and B, right? When I drew that last line, I was just using a, an eyeball metric. I was just saying, oh, this looks like a pretty good line through there. But what you'd really like to do is find the best line through the data, where the best means that you're relating it to some quantity that's mathematical. Okay, so there's going to be an optimization procedure that goes through this, finding the best A and B through your data that minimizes some error. And what we're going to specifically do is minimize the L2 error. So if you remember the L2 error, it was equal to 1 over the number of points, so it's like an average. You sum up your approximation minus the actual data, so this is what you uh, what your line fit thinks the data should be, but this is the actual value, squared, and this whole thing to the one half. Okay, so that's the technical definition of least square fit error, or the E2 error, root mean square. So, but really, if you look at this formula, if I want to minimize this error, all I have to do is minimize this sum that's in here. So, really, you want to minimize the sum. Because if you minimize this sum, you know, taking 1 over n and square root, it, if you've minimized the sum, that's going to be the minimum of the full thing. Okay? So I want to think about minimizing uh, that quantity there. Let's call this quantity uh, scripty. Okay, so script D itself, we can now start thinking about this a little bit. I have this sum, and by the way, all the sums are going to go from, you know, I have n uh, points, so I can write that every time, go from 1 to n, but let's just, whenever I write a sum, it's going to be from 1 to n in this case for this lectures. Okay, and I'm going to think about uh, this quantity here. And the fact is, I actually know what f is. It's here. This is what I'm going to assume it to be. And by the way, if you do something uh, that's not a line, you can put it in here. But then the idea is, if I want to do this, and it's ax of k plus b minus y of k squared. Okay? That is the, that is the object that you are trying to to minimize. Now, one of the key ideas from differential calculus is this idea of the derivative. And the derivative of being zero means that you've either maximized or minimized a quantity. And so what we want to think about doing is taking the derivative of this quantity and setting it to zero so we can maximize or minimize. Now, it turns out there is no maximum error, right? I could make a curve fit very poorly so that the error goes to infinity. So there's no upper bound on how bad my curve fit could be, right? It could be worse and worse and worse as I just move my line further and further away from the data points. However, there is a minimum of what my error could be, and that's what we want to determine. And the way we do that is we are actually trying to figure out 
how to minimize this with respect to those parameters A and B. How do I pick A and B so that this is small as possible? And this leads us to two formulas. I'm going to think about taking the derivative of this formula with respect to A and setting it to 0. Take the derivative of the formula with respect to B and setting it equal to 0. Now this is a very simple derivative formula we're going to apply and it's based upon uh, taking essentially derivative of something like this, a function raised to some power, which you bring down the power, you get the function back times n minus 1, and your chain rule would say df dx. So this is a very simple formula from calculus, or from differential calculus. In one of the earliest days of calculus, this is the power law rule. And so all we're going to do is apply that formula to this uh, error measurement right here. Okay. So let's go ahead and take the derivative of this quantity here. Notice it has a power of 2, which is going to come down. Okay, So you're going to get a sum. 2 times axk plus b goes to 1. 2 minus 1 is 1, so you just get that. Times the derivative of what's inside with respect to a. Right? Remember, we're taking the derivative of this thing with respect to a. Well, the thing, if we take the derivative with respect to a, it's just a constant. I get, or sorry, it's just uh, it's multiplied by x of k. x of k in this case looks like a constant. And that is my formula, and this thing here is equal to zero. Oop. Uh, I for forgot my y of k here. So there is a plus b minus y of k. Sorry. Okay? If I do something similar like that with respect to b, I get a sum. Again, the 2 comes down, axk plus b minus y of k, okay, times now the derivative of the inside with respect to b, take db, db is 1. So now what I have is two equations for two unknowns. The two unknowns I have are a and b, and I have two equations I have to solve for the a and b. And that's as simple as it gets. That's, that's it right there. And that's all we have to do with this differential calculus. It's a simple power law rule, and that's going to give me exactly what I need here um, to, to, to come up with my formula. Okay, so let's think about what we're going to do here with this now, is we're going to take a look at this thing here, and we're going to start looking at that. I have x of k times this x of k, so I get an x of k squared. In fact, um, if I start collecting terms, I'm going to get, I can drop the 2 here. I can divide by 2 on both sides, and there's no problem there. And then let's look at what's multiplied by a. Well, multiply here by a is I have a times x of k squared. That's that sum. What do I have times b? Well, b is just times x of k. Okay? And, um, then I have this product, I have this here, x of k times y of k, and that's a negative on this side. I can move it to the other side, and that's going to just be a sum, x of k, y of k. So there's one formula that has to hold. For the second one, I have a times sum of x of k, that's this guy here. Then I have b times 1, and it's the sum of them. So if I add up b n times, I get n times b. So I get plus b times n. And then I just have y sub k here, which I can move to the other side, which is equal to y sub k. Okay? So those are the formulas I get. And uh, that's going to give me my final formula for how to solve for a and b because now I have two equations, two unknowns. These two equations and two unknowns can be solved just by doing a little bit of linear algebra. You can either do back substitution or you can do your Gaussian elimination to solve for those. 
But essentially, at the end of the day, what you get is a matrix system uh, where you have the sum of x of k squared, sum of x of k, sum of x of k, n, a, b, is equal to x of k, y sub k, sum y sub k. This is a two by two system of equations. So you can solve that just using the backslash in MATLAB. And by the way, if for those of you who have uh, Excel and do curve fitting Excel, this is just the formula that you use. You sum up the square of all the x positions, sum the, all the x positions, sum all the x positions, total number of points. Here it's the x and the y positions multiplied. Here's the y positions. And then now you have A and B. And these A and B minimize this error. That is how you do least square fitting. Okay?